see him this cheap again. Wedding day special! In the name of the Father, and in the presence of these holy relics, I hereby pronounce you man and wife from this time forth. May the blessings of the gods light your path for all eternity. Father. If, following this, Arcadia should launch an attack by both land and air, our kingdom will stand little... Nabodis has fallen. Impossible! My father? I know not. I am sorry. If Nabodis has indeed fallen, it is only a matter of time before they reach the borders of Dalmasca. There is nothing to halt their advance. <sighs> Secure Nalvano with all haste. I will go. And I will go at his side. Galtea, stand watch over your life. That I be considered worthy.
blessings of the Great Father descend and guide your bodies return to the Earth. Great Father, guide your spirits return to the Mother of All. There you shall find peace. Faran. The death of Lord Rasla Heos Nabradia was but one of many tragedies to befall the Kingdom of Dalnaska. The air of hope that had surrounded Her Royal Highness Princess Asha's wedding was now quite lost. Dalmaska had been set adrift at the mercy of history's restless tides. At this time, two great empires struggled for dominion over Ivalice. Arcadia in the east, Rosaria the west. The invasion of the Kingdom of Nabradia was Arcadia's first step in its westward march. With Lord Rosla's beloved homeland consumed by the hellfires of war, it seemed clear that Arcadia would soon meet out a like fate to Dalmasca. The fall of the fortress at Nalbana told the destruction of the greater part of Dalmasca's forces. A counterattack was mounted by the order of the Knights of Dalmasca, ever brave and faithful. But against the martial might of the Arcadian armies, they stood little chance of victory. Indeed, their defeat was to be absolute. Soon thereafter, Arcadia came forward, offering terms of peace, or as one might rather put it, terms of Dalmasca surrender. Lord Ramanas, King of Dalmasca, and my dear friend, had no choice but to accept these terms. It was, thus, only with reluctance that he set out for Nalbana Fortress, now under Arcadian occupation, to affix his seal to the Emperor's Treaty of Peace. The King had scarce departed his royal city of Rabanasta when the remnants of the Order made their return, and not a moment too soon for a terrible revelation awaited them. The treaty would be signed with steel and writ in royal blood. You there. Can you hear me? <laughs> it's as I feared. They're slowing us down. Do not say that. Not all of us are here for love of battle. He <laughs> fights to defend his homeland. <laughs> Your name? Rex, sir. My name's Rex. Good. Rex. You bore a few cuts. But you are still whole. Well, can you stand? <clears throat> Think you can fight? I'm fine, sir. How old are you, Rex? Seventeen, sir. Young. Family? My brother is all I have left, sir. He's two years younger than I. Living in Rabanaster. So young. You're barely old enough to be a man. You shouldn't be forced to wield a sword. No, sir. I want to fight. For my homeland. And for my parents. It's time, Bosch. Save the discussion for later. We must reach the king before they act, or all our efforts will be in vain. I'm aware of the situation. We found them! Over there! Bosla, go ahead. I will handle this rabble. Godspeed.
Steady, Rex. Keep your wits about you and you'll make it. We move! <laughs> <laughs> 